Welcome and thank you for taking a few minutes to listen to this year's series of County Government Listening Up Coaching Sessions presented by the Association of County Commissions of Alabama and designed to provide a useful look at some of the most pressing legislative issues impacting Alabama's 67 county governments as we prepare for the 2021 legislative session. I'm Sonny Brassfield, Executive Director of the Association, and over the next few minutes, I'd like to focus our attention on the impact of and history behind a piece of priority legislation that is important for all county governments during the legislature's 2021 regular session. Our focus for the next few minutes will be a look at legislation to address the financial impacts of the 2015 prison reform legislation here in Alabama. About five years ago, the Alabama legislature attempted to address the growing overcrowding issues in the State Department of Corrections facilities around the state of Alabama. A number of experts were called in from around the country and legislation was passed here in Alabama that was very similar to legislation adopted in a number of other states also facing overcrowding issues. The legislation was aimed at reducing the number of persons incarcerated inside those state facilities and shifting as many people as possible to local programs as part of their parole conditions so that persons would be more quickly paroled from the department's custody and moved to the local level where they could be supervised, reintegrated into society, and all of that certainly aimed at saving money for the Department of Corrections. There's no question that over the last six years, this legislation has been very effective for the Alabama Department of Corrections, reducing its prison population at its peak by almost 20%. More than 5,000 inmates were reduced from the department's inmate population during that time. The outcome at the local level has been that county governments have absorbed an enormous portion of the cost that were shifted from the department because these inmates are no longer housed in state facilities, but these inmates have at an alarming rate shown up inside county jails. In fact, between 2015 and 2020, the number of state inmates inside county jails increased from about 2,000 per year to more than 8,000 per year. And certainly that is extremely costly for the local taxpayers. In fact, the cost of law enforcement as well as jail operations in the 67 counties has increased by about $100 million since the 2015 reforms were passed. So legislation will be introduced this session, sponsored in the Senate by Senator Greg Albritton, that would address three or four very technical issues in the 2015 legislation that have been the culprits for most of the cost for Alabama's county governments. Many of you who have watched this issue closely will recognize the terms dips and dunks, but for most of you, you're scratching your head now if I tell you that much of the problem has been the creation of dips and dunks in the 2015 legislation. That process was aimed at providing short stays, first in the county jail, that would be dips, and then eventually in the Department of Corrections facilities, that would be a dunk, that would be aimed at convincing a parolee to change his or her behavior so that they would not go automatically back to the department of corrections. The problem for counties has been those persons who are dropped off for short stays, two or three days, those are called dips. That's generated an enormous amount of cost for counties. Those costs have been absorbed directly out of the local budgets paid for by the local taxpayers. The Department of Corrections has contributed nothing toward those costs. And then when a person continues to violate their parole, will eventually be sentenced or sent back to the Department of Corrections for 45 days. Those costs for the so-called dunks are also absorbed by the counties in all of jail operations, security, health care, all of those issues that come with holding someone in the county jail for an extended period of time. Senator Albritton's legislation would revamp the dips and dunks process 
continuing the philosophy of providing attention to those persons who are violating their parole conditions at the local level, but ensuring that the Department of Corrections will provide funding for counties as they absorb these costs. And in fact, the legislation would say, if the state of Alabama fails to provide funding, then the dips and dunks would stop for that fiscal year. We think this is fair. If the state wants to reduce its population inside state prison facilities by shifting those persons to the local county jails, then the state of Alabama, not the local taxpayers, should foot the bill for those costs. The bill also makes some other technical changes in the law that will speed up the transfer process for state inmates or persons who are sentenced to state custody but must await transfer in the county jail. So those three things together we think will create a more balanced playing field for local taxpayers. It also will ensure that the state of Alabama has some skin in the game and that the state does provide funding for this reduction in its state inmate population. Again, this legislation will be part of priority efforts by county officials and employees during the 2021 session. This concludes our brief review of the impacts of the 2015 prison reform package on Alabama counties and the effort this year to address them with some changes. Should you have any questions about this legislation or any other, we encourage you to go to our website, alabamacounties.org, or to follow us on Twitter, or in fact, you can follow me at, at Sonny Brassville on Twitter. You can reach us any of those ways if you have questions. Thanks for spending a few minutes of your time with us so that you could better understand this vitally important issue for Alabama's county governments. Thank you.